Hello, my name is John and welcome to Ask John D. Jones. In today's episode, I'm going to walk you through the process of how to create a custom dashboard and then that dashboard create a list of unscheduled or scheduled posts or pages which are going to get displayed. Okay, so in this tutorial, I've already set everything up. I'm not going to write the code specifically. I've written a tutorial which tells you everything you'll need to do to do this, which will be linked at in the show notes below. What I'm going to do is basically show you everything you need just so you can have a look at how it all works. Now, within a, my website, I've got a number of components. Now, let's say we want to have a dashboard component which is going to register and display our pages. What we need to do is create a new class and from our class we need to inherit from well, inherit implement from the i dashboard component. Now within here you can define where the component's going to show. For me, I just want to display my component within the content section. This will be presented to a user when they're first logged in. You'll also want to define what type of rules, who can access it. Now this is generally going to be you know anyone who's logged into Umbraco. So all you need to do is just make sure that you know they have the right permissions. The alias is the name which will be displayed in Umbraco, and this view is going to be the location of a class, and a controller, and an action. Now, the Umbraco back office plugin is just the standard default URL that you need to use whenever you're creating an API within Umbraco, and admin and last published tutorials will be specifically the controller that we're using and the action. So with our dashboard created, what we want to do is create our admin controller. My admin controller looks like this. Now, as you can see, I'm using dependency injection as we're using in Braco 8 to inject um, a number of dependencies. What I'm going to do in this uh, scenario is call this um, Admin controller, uh, which we talked about within the dashboard, and we're also going to create our action. Now, it doesn't really make a difference which one we use. What this is going to do is call this view unpublished tutorials. This is going to map to a view within my views folder. So as you can see, we have views, admin, unpublished tutorials, and last published tutorials. Nothing is overly exciting about this controller. The one thing you need to remember is because we're working with sensitive data, which we don't want to be available to the whole world, that you want to inherit from the Embraco authorized controller. So going on and looking to our code. What we want to do is think about how we're going to query content within Episur within Umbraco. Now, this creates a bit of a problem because what we want to do is we want to access pages which have not yet been created or published. Now, there's a few ways of doing this, and there's a very unperformant way. And what you could probably do is start with the home page and do an API query. That API query could then go through all the descendants, all the children in your website. And if you've got a massive website, you're just gonna get these massive performance sort of bottlenecks and issues. A better way of solving this problem is via indexes. Now out of the box, Umbraco uses a thing called Examine, which is its search provider. Examine sits on top of Lucene. So basically when you're creating content, adding content, writing content, all that sort of good stuff, what happens is this Lucene index is getting updated in the background. Now, out of the box, Umbraco comes with two indexes. There's one which is called external index, and external index is really useful because it's got a list of all the published pages. For our needs, though, that does not do the trick because obviously we want to get um, unpublished and scheduled pages. Now, because these scheduled pages haven't been published, we need to use um, either a custom index, which I'm using in this instance, or you can use the internal index. So the code to query an index can be seen within this method. Now, what we want to do is pass in the index that we want to create. In mine, I want to display a list of tutorials which are yet to publish, so I know what I need to spell check before they go out. Now, another thing you want to check is that when we're querying this in a minute, that the 
published field is set to no. So what we're basically doing is we're passing in this index from this index based on uh, the name that we want to use. We're going to get a searcher and then within the searcher you build up a query. Now what this thing is going to do is it's going to return a number of search results. And if you look at the search results, these aren't actually in bracket pages. What it's going to do is give you this search result thing and it's going to give you a total item. So what we'll have to do as well at some stage is convert these results into Umbraco tutorials. In Moving on to the code, we've got our number of search queries and what we're then going to do is loop through these results and using the standard uh, Umbraco APIs we're going to get information about that page. Now because we're trying to get um, like published or scheduled information, you won't be able to get this using the standard Umbraco API. And standard Umbraco sort of APIs return and will help you work with iPublish content. And what we actually want to work with here is the iContent. So this is done using the content service. Now content service, for if you missed it, is getting injected within my constructor here. Now. When you're working with Embraco 8, construction, constructor injection and following good solid principles and dependency injection, all that sort of good stuff is things that you should follow. It's a little bit outside of this episode to talk all about it, but it's definitely something you should consider. Now, when we're in our content service, what we're gonna do is pass in the Embraco ID that we get from our search. And in the search ID, this ID here relates to our Embraco ID. And then, what we're going to do is use this content schedule. So this content schedule, full schedule, first or default, this is going to pretty much relate to you know the, the scheduled date. Now in theory you might have a start date and a hide date. So what we care about really is the first date here. So what happens now is that once we have a controller set up and we've got a view set up if we log into the back end what is that all about What we'll see is we're presented with these two new dashboard panels. Now the dashboard panel that we've just been looking at is the unpublished tutorials. When we click on this it will go off. It takes a little while because it needs to warm up. As you can see now we've got a list of all the tutorials which are yet to be scheduled on my website. So quickly looking at some of the things we've skipped. Obviously this is all working from first registering that custom dashboard. The custom dashboard code again was found in this thingy. Again, this is just very simple um, dashboard code. Inherit from the, right, in, implement the I dashboard, do some access rules, and then just make sure the name and the location are correct. The location is the main thing you really care about is the controller and the action. Within your controller, you'll need to make sure that you have a corresponding admin and action. One thing you may need to do is probably set up your route. So if you have a look in here, you can see that I've just mapped a standard route. The name is uh, default and in here it's just mirroring the same details. So we've got our controller and our action and then within here we've got our controller and action and with all this hooked up hopefully your controller should get called. Now when the controller gets called we're handing responsibility back to a view. This view is very simple, it's got a very empty HTML like layout and in here all I'm doing is basically just looping through the data that I've got from the search results. So anyway, I hope this video has been useful for some people. Just a quick walkthrough about you know how to set up a custom dashboard, display some sort of different information. If this has been useful for you, then uh, please hit subscribe. Hit subscribe, I'll call you a legend. Otherwise, go to my website, johndjones.com, for some more information. Thank you.